right. Welcome, everyone, to Politically High Tech with your host, Elias. This is going to be episode 182. Yeah, 182. I'm surprised I made it this far. I know. Trust me, I wanted to quit 20 times already. Just being very, very transparent. They saw a lot of supposed to have to go through. But... You, but you got to persevere, okay? You just don't know. You have that that regrettable what if, what if, what if, what if. I kept going. That's why I kept going. And I know, and I had that regret before. I had what if regret. So I'm not making that same mistake again. So before this intro gets very, very long-winded, I have a guest here who is, I have to say, thank God I'm not going through this male-only empowerment pattern anymore. He breaks that very easily based on his clientele. He has both men and women. Yay. You don't have to claim, you don't have to claim that I'm a sexist anymore for those of you who hate me. Okay. And he's a positive person. I mean, with every positive person, you have to go through that experience. Normally a tragic experience, either a loved one, um, either dies or got severely sick for not being healthy or whatever other complications that. I'm going to have the guest tell a little more about that, um, but he is also an actor as well, and he's a model. I am not surprised. Of course, models, most models have to be fit and healthy. That's just a, that's just a fact of life. Is there plus size models that exist? Yeah, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm just not going to. Okay, so let's welcome Roman Fisher. Yes, thanks for having me. All right, so tell, yeah, just elaborate your intro a little bit. What got you just uh do this coaching work, getting people pumped up and get them just to be not just fit and healthy despite having busy schedules? Right. So what got me into fitness really uh, to help other people was, you know, after I saw my brother work out and get into fitness, it inspired me to want to get into fitness as well. And then researching all the, you know, positive benefits of working out and eating healthy, as well as all the, you know, really bad ingredients people consume that motivated me to not eat unhealthy because I used to eat pretty unhealthy, uh, to say the least. So after I made that change, I got addicted you know, for lack of a better word to this, you know, lifestyle. So you could actually call it a healthy addiction. And so that was something that I just went all in with and just was, yeah, consistent with that. And then after that and following in love with the whole process, I wanted to share that same, you know, euphoria, that same positive energy I was getting from, you know, with all the healthy uh, benefits from my lifestyle. So I wanted to uh, share that with other people around me starting with people that I knew and loved, obviously my inner circle sphere of influence. After that, I wanted to branch out to everybody around me as much as possible and just try to change one body at a time. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You know, a lot of these success stories always have to include some personal stake, I believe, because you're not personally attached to it. I mean, I'm just gonna be quite frank. I personally don't like that, but I get it because it does nothing motivates you like your loved one getting very sick or even Drop dead. It was like, oh crap. What if I could have done this? But you couldn't save that one particular love, but you spread that to those who are still alive. And of course, those abroad, way beyond your um inner circle. Probably friends, friends, or some random stranger you had a great vibe with. It's rare in New York City. I don't recommend that if you're New York City, but um, that's just my bias there. But no, I get it. I get it. And I'll say for once, I'm going to have to be a bit of a hypocrite. This podcast is personal street because I don't personally see people talk about things very rationally and entertaining if you can mix the two together. A lot of it is, okay, Democrat evil, Republican evil, all, all that stuff. And it, it gets very tiring. I mean, I enjoy it for a little bit, but then it gets very, very tiring. And then for fitness, well, just put more relevance to this, there's a lot of these stupid fad diets that just don't work out. It's just a trend. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's a huge common thing in the fitness industry, sadly. You have all these fad diets. I mean, there's probably a million out there <laughs> right now as we speak. Oh, yeah. They, they just like stupid trends that come and go because they just simply don't work. And they beat the populace finds out, okay, this was just a fad, been duped. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm a bit of a cynic. So I believe nine out of ten things will fail. And it's just that a lot of people don't catch up. Um, and then people tell me months later or even years later, I'm right. It's a, of course I'm right. It's like trans <laughs> building. They're cool that moment. And then by the time you try to, by the time you don't get it, then it gets old real fast. 
Because right. either because the results, the R, the R, I'm, I'm going to use a more financial term, it just diminishes greatly to the point it becomes a deficit. So you know, who, who you know, one of them, and especially V Shred, I think I think he's a con artist. My opinion, yeah, I'm calling him out. Oh, I could eat pizza, still get muscles. I don't believe that garbage. I don't believe that garbage for a second. I'm not going to rant. I'm not going to rant too long, but I just don't trust V-Stred. And if I were you people, I will think not twice, three times about it. Um, I don't I don't trust him at all. He he got shredded through a different way. I doubt eating pizza and all that just working out is going to make you like that. I know you're not selling that kind of product. Thank God. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there in the fitness industry that people are promoting and selling. It, it's... Some of it's just crazy, <laughs> but like, yeah. <laughs> and now let me get back to the positives before I go on a long rant. Um, I tend to do that sometimes. Um, so let's get to, let's stick to the positive now because that's not easy for me. I'm going to be honest. My listeners know me already. I jump from positive to negative to stoic, don't give a damn, and all of that other good stuff. What do you enjoy most by helping your clients? Let's yeah. Let me just let me be grounded. Yeah, for sure. What I really enjoy most is really seeing the transformation, you know, from where they started initially, like where they originated from. And typically it's from a darker, you know, spot, darker place in their uh, life. And also not just with how they like felt, but also how they, you know, used to look to where they are now and how they feel now. So the whole nine yards, essentially just the overall transformation with their bodies or physiques, their personality, and even their whole energy you know, so to speak, just everything from where it was to where it is now and just seeing the day and night difference. It's really, really powerful. And it actually inspires me even because I'm like, okay, I was able to help them. They transformed. They came all this way. This huge, you know, amount of progress they made in this amount of time. And then I was that person that helped them. Of course, they put the work in, but I helped them with putting that work in and knowing that and seeing that you know, firsthand, it's like, wow, it's unbelievable, but it's really, really cool and very, very, yeah, thrilling to see. And no, he has some before and after uh, photos for each client. So, you know, if you want to think he's fake news, well, I think your brain is fake news. How about that? Um, you know, you know, there's a time we have to drop your cynicism and skepticism at some point. Um, I don't mind maintaining that at the beginning, but once there's proof, once there is either good not just one testimony the, I mean a couple of testimonies at least for me personally you already have like three or four on the website right in front real easy to find people he put it right there the first page of his website which I'm going to be sharing that just a little bit that'll be mostly a call to action so they a little foreshadowing right there folks and I've seen it. some of them uh lord forgive me it's gonna sound like I'm insulted but I'm not you know some of these look like moving marshmallows moving beach balls but now they're looking better feeling better and all of that i mean i, I shouldn't talk i mean sure i got fat hidden you know i got muscles hitting these fat here i'm i'm not me personally i gotta shed some fat um fasting has worked for me so far i've shed 12 pounds miraculously because i said I, I eat too much <laughs> so i've got to go the massive caloric deficit i don't recommend that for everybody i'm just saying it works for me just because works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you and i've, I've managed to make it work and, and make it bearable and i even add exercise um whenever i can because i'm extremely busy so that's my personal thing and i'm not a fitness trainer so feel free to just bash me even ignore me in there and i won't i could care less because it works for me um but don't take my word you know this it's a roman has to say he's a lot more credible than i am in this discipline that's why he's here okay now for the more positive thing what's your favorite training regimens um this is a two-part question what's your favorite training regimen what's the clients i mean as a whole i i know I'm not going to encourage exposing personal information because I would not want that to happen to me, just based on your experience. Yeah, my favorite training regimen is doing, obviously, going to the gym uh, five, day, uh, five days a week, so a five-day split. So typically, uh, upper-lower push-pull legs. So I'll do Monday upper, Tuesday's uh, lower body day, Wednesday's rest, and then Thursday's push, uh, basically your chest and your shoulders and triceps and then friday is pull so back and biceps and then saturday is uh lower body or legs and core and that's what i do it really helps just break down each muscle group just nicely but also works them out each twice a week 
for maximum uh, maximum results with fat loss and muscle growth. So that's been my favorite. That's actually what I've been doing for quite some time now. Now for my clients, they typically, because a lot of my clients tend to be busier people, um, not to say if, you know, I get pretty busy too, but they tend to not like being in the gym more than three days a week, which is understandable. So much of my clients, for the most part, they work out three days a week, uh, full body. So typically it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they'll do full body on those uh, three days. And typically it's a you know combination of not only doing circuit training with the uh, calisthenics and also dumbbell and strength training, but also it is uh, some light cardio at the end of it, just to really, you know, add that extra calorie burn and their workouts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a reasonable answer, especially for the busier client. And assuming if I agree to do this training, I will definitely fit into that busy client. I mean, I have two jobs, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> Cause I know sometimes I gotta have time to socialize. Well, this is one of them right now, even though it's not as informal, that's good for me. This is more socializing with a purpose, which that's actually ignites me. Not just, oh, how's the weather today? Oh, it's gonna rain. Oh, great. You waste my time with such small talk. I hate small talk, by the way. They that's a new fact from you that you learn from your host. Not a big fan of it because you're just wasting my time. Um, so I know I sound like a New York snob. Sometimes I am, I admit. And I'm a Christian on top of that. So that doesn't mix well together all the time. I'm just being <laughs> But if there's purpose, I'm just going to go for it. And that's the thing. I've wasted enough time. And, and well, some of it is other people's fault. And a, a good chunk of it is my fault as well. So I'm to this point of like that. It doesn't serve a purpose. I'm just going to toss it aside pretty quickly. And I didn't think I was gonna become that kind of person more decisive and driven. But I think that was always in me because as a kid, I was more decisive and driven. And then into my teenager to early adult years, I started being more laid back understanding. And then now I'm 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 about to approach my mid 30s. I said, No, I got to go back to being the decisive doing all that because I just I can't fool around anymore. That's just me personally. So nice. that is, you know, that's great. Yep. I'm definitely one of those um, busy people. If I see, if I see it's not going to work out, I'm just going to let you know straight up just respect my time and the other person's time. That's just that's good. I'm yeah. Time. Setting the boundaries and yeah. agenda. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like to be respectful of my time and other people's time. If I'm going to say, so say no. I mean, I was going to have a potential business deal. I just told them, I mean, the day before I said, nope, the I don't see it's not going to work out. I said that, you know, I don't like to keep pe people in limbo. I, that hasn't been reciprocated to me. And then those people, I'll just let them drop by the wayside because I got to keep going. It's not about being mean. It's not about being uh, snobbish or think I'm better than you. It's just, I got to keep going. You know, just because your life's on the pause doesn't, doesn't mean my life's on the pause. I got to keep going. And I'm sure you're going to understand that. It's like Tom Roman, wait, cancel your week of regiment trainings. Have the world revolve around me. I'm, sh I'm sure he's going to think, of, what is the lies? Crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. What? Yeah. I was, no. Yeah. No. Sadly, but think some people got that entitlement that the the world's got to revolve around them. I don't get one of those people. That's yeah. yeah. That's true. It's you got to be careful with those people. Yeah. And why am I managing that? Why? Why am I? Why am I managing that? Why am I saying that? Because time management is very important for busy people. This is the only reason why I have to emphasize that as well. I mean, I remember I saw a couple of your videos used to be like, a, so, all right, enough yapping about me. You know, feel free to chime in. It's about you. Um, So now for my final question. Yeah, but I really didn't have many. This is, I think, a big part. How do you stay motivated? I'm talking about long term because I'll be could start off doing so well, like the first two weeks and the third, like, oh, I'm burnt out. I oh, yeah. Oh, Romans thing is crazy. I don't know. I don't know how you talk me into this. All right, go ahead. How can someone stay motivated or you? Yeah. So how I see motivation, you know, it comes and it goes. And so it is good to have always you want to have that initial motivation to start with because you want to have that spark, you know, inside of you to, you know, get yourself going initially. And that's for me. That's for anyone. But after that initial spark of motivation, it can ultimately go out if you allow it to. So to keep that spark going or that fire inside of you going is after getting that initial motivation, you want to back it up with action and planning. And then that will actually help with determination and consistency. 
Because I love to say this, motivation gets you going, but consistency keeps you growing. <laughs> so keeping that just consistency, um, you know, in the background, that will actually help that motivation, you know, stay, uh, stay lit. So just really have small actions and break those long term goals into smaller, uh, more manageable, easier attainable goals. And as you do that, as you go, like, especially with the workout regimen, don't start, you know, too big, start with like two to three days a week and build off of that. And don't overwhelm yourself. A lot of people, a lot of people will actually overwhelm themselves with, you know, such huge goals. I got to lose 50 to 100 pounds by X month, you know, in the next few months, they might say, which you can lose weight. And some people can lose weight quicker than others. But you don't want to lose it too quick because it's not healthy and it's not very, you know, sustainable, so to speak. So really understanding that and also knowing it's just going to overwhelm yourself mentally. So just being very, you know, careful, being very smart about it and very gradual about it, that will actually help you stay, you know, stay the course. Yep. All that he said, I already have implemented. This is why this has been the most consistent I've been this year. You want to go back to me 15 years ago? Don't even talk to me about exercise. The only exercise I'm going to do is just probably just attack the person. That's the most exercise. <laughs> this is me. I was kind of a depressed, angry teenager, if you haven't figured that out. Um, so... And what he's saying is actually fact, start small, gradually grow big. That's what I did. I did twice a week, put three times a week. And eventually I, I do five times a week. Uh, my my personal problem is holidays has kind of put me in a rut. I exercise whenever I can, but um, I just do a little business. I, if I can't exercise more, I'll just fast a little more. Um, And then I, and I kind of switch it up, but that's just me. Um, The good news is I'm not going to a complete standstill like I used to, so... That part is good. I don't want you to think I'm I'm, I'm a very good A plus student here. I, I could barely get a C if it comes a fitness class because I'm naturally not a motivate. I'm I have na naturally have low motivation. So oh why why am I doing this? Why why why? <laughs> that's that that's naturally me. Yeah, I'm really honest. Um, but you know he's positive. That that's why he's here. And you don't want to you don't want fitness for me because I probably just tell you to go back to doing whatever you're gonna do. Is I don't got time for this. So that's why I'm not a fitness coach. I just know me. I I can barely motivate myself. I mean I don't want to transfer that burden to other people. So I'm very aware of that. Very aware of that. Um, I can teach people how to be smarter in politics and technology, all that other stuff. I'm more comfortable. Those are better comes to fitness. Oh, I'm going to tell you what I did, and that's it. And you should listen to Roman way more than me on this one. <laughs> just saying, just, just grasp what he's saying. If you don't understand it, just rewind it, play it slower, what have you. I'm not going to repeat it. There's no need, there's no need to repeat it. Uh, we got the rewind features and all that. I'm sure Spotify, Apple, all of them, or you just drag the, the dot back, Um, okay? Because I'm not going to repeat it. So <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah, we got to be smart here. We got the technology here. All righty, then. Let me just do the quick call to action. If I forget anything, feel free to chime in. Go to his website, romanfisherofficial.com. I'm going to spell that for you. R-O-M-A-N-F-I-S-C-H-E-R-O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L.com. Calm. Okay. And this is a website I was referring to earlier where he has testimonies. And yes, he has a more serious, burly face. Yep. That means you made it to the, to the correct website. Okay. And he has his journey right there and the client results I was referring to um earlier. Um, yeah. So what if it's majority women, women got to work out too. So, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anything else um you want to add? Yeah, sure. If you want to follow me on my social media, connect with me there too. I am on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, even LinkedIn. And my handle is Roman Fisher Official. So yeah, you can definitely follow me on there and connect with me. And I would love to, yeah, connect and yeah, have a conversation. Okay. Well, just like my normal standards, sometimes I forget to mention it, but I do include all social media links in the description of the episode. So you have more than one way of finding it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the easier it is um, for others, I'm sure, you know, easiness encourages people just to do a bunch of things. Sadly, with fitness, it's not one of them. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so AI that goes magically just shed all our fat. Um, I'm sure they're trying to come up with something as crazy as that. But um, yeah, I don't think it's there just yet. And just a holy breath on that. Okay, then. So I know this is short, fast than usual, um, because we had to get more straight to the point. We are both very busy people. But for whenever you listen to this podcast, you have a blessed day, afternoon, lot a night. Um, share, give a like, comment. Um, subscribe to either the YouTube Rumble and check the. And if you listen to this on audio, search through Apple or Spotify. Leave a review. Leave an honest review. Even if it's four stars, I could take it. I have a strong. I have, I have a pretty good ego. So just leave a review and just give some feedback. All righty then. With that out of the way, peace.